Can you hear me? All right. Now it's my turn. <laughs> oh. How y'all doing? Pretty quiet. Happy Sabbath. Happy Sabbath. All right. Now we've got a pulse. All right. Is everybody blessed this week? Man, I'll tell you what, uh, as I was preparing this message, there, God's got something really powerful he wants to share with you. Uh, and I know because the devil really tried to take me out. <laughs> Uh, I got so sick this morning, and uh, my wife tried to take me out with some kind of uh, concoction she made, and it really made me sick, so I spent uh, the whole morning uh, in the bathroom throwing up. So, sorry to have to share that with you, but uh, anyway, so I'm only here by the grace of God. So, I know that there's a powerful message that God wants to share with you today as we begin a new year. Uh, I'd ask a couple of favors. Pray for me. Uh, Pray that God will put his words in my mouth and uh, not speak to any of my own opinions and uh, that you, he'll also open the ears that uh, everybody here can be a, receive a blessing. Amen? Let me say a quick prayer. <clears throat> Dear Heavenly Father, thank you, Lord, so much for sustaining me. Thank you for uh, bringing us all here safely. Um, thank you, Lord, for uh, the message that you've prepared. I pray that you'll put your words in my mouth and that uh, everybody here can receive a, a special blessing and, and be changed for it and we can Start the new year uh, different, Lord. And I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. A couple of favors. Uh, I know I asked you all already to pray for me, but uh, also ask that uh, you would grab your Bibles and follow along. I don't, I don't want you to take my word for it. Um, I want you to see for yourself uh, you know, what, what the message is that God wants to speak to you. Um, so, as I was thinking for a title for the message, uh, I hate getting in front of a lot of people, so uh, I'm a, my, my message that I, I, that I put together was get uncomfortable, um, and, and, and it's about getting out of your comfort zone, doing, doing something uh, different. Uh, if you, if you want to get results that you've never gotten before, you've got to do things you've never done before, amen? And uh, Revelation 3.17, if you all will turn to that, is... The condition, I know we've read this before, but it's the condition of, of God's church. It's a sad condition. Just say amen when you're there. <clears throat> so he says, Because thou sayest I'm rich, and increase with goods, and in need of nothing, And knowest not that thou art wretched, miserable, poor, blind, and naked. So, what God's saying here is that you think you're all right. When you're rich and increased with goods, you could you could say you're, you know, you're comfortable, right? You don't need anything. And uh, it it, uh, creates a a sad position uh, to be in. Uh, You know, I've I've heard it uh, said that uh, we're the frozen chosen. And uh, we're not doing anything. Uh, we're neither hot nor cold. So what is, what is, uh, what is, what is necessary for us to make a change? What's going to change our lives? What's going to get us out of our comfort zone? Um, I, I believe the, the gospel uh, shares, uh, does that, wakes you up, and uh, it makes you on fire for the Lord. And that, that would be found in Matthew 24, uh, 14. You guys will turn to that. This is the gospel that's going to bring the harvest. So the disciples ask uh, Jesus, when is the end of the world going to happen? And Jesus uh, shares with them that First, this gospel, bless you. First, this gospel has to go uh, around the whole world, and then the end will come. So, where can we find in the Bible where there's a gospel that's preached, and then there's a harvest? Does anybody know? I'll give you a hint. It's in Revelation. Revelation 14, 6 and 7, if you guys will turn to that. So, 
here's a gospel that's preached, and then just a few verses down, there's the harvest. So this is the gospel that Jesus is speaking of. He says, And I saw another angel flying in the midst of heaven, having the everlasting gospel, to preach to them that dwell on the earth, to every nation, kindred, tongue, and people, saying with a loud voice, Fear God and give glory to him, for the hour of his judgment has come, and worship him that made the heaven, the earth, the sea, and the fountains of the waters. So this gospel's got to go be preached, and then the end will come. Now, I want to just focus in on, uh, you know, we know that the fear of the Lord uh, there's, is, you know, to depart from evil. Uh, and uh, there's different Bible verses that explain what the fear of the Lord is. But what I wanted to focus on today is, uh, is giving God glory. Does anybody know how do we give God glory? I'll give you a hint. Uh, it, it's uh, found in... Uh, uh, it's mentioned in Exodus, if you'll, if you'll look, Moses, Exodus 33 and, and 34, Moses asked God to show him his glory. And so God reveals to us what his glory is. So let's, let's turn to that. Uh, Exodus 33, 18. Just say amen when you're there. Well, no, I'm not there. <laughs> and so Moses says, starting on verse 18, he says, I beseech thee, show me your glory. So God says, okay, I'm going to show all my goodness, and I'll pro proclaim the name of the Lord. So God here is sharing that his name and his glory are synonymous. And then if we look further on down in chapter 34... 34, 6, and 7. And the Lord passed by before him and proclaimed the name of the Lord, the Lord, the Lord, merciful, gracious, and long-suffering, and abundant in goodness and in truth, keeping mercy for thousands, forgiving iniquity, transgression, and sin, but by no means clearing the guilty, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children and upon the children's children unto the third and fourth generation. So God here is showing us that his glory and his name uh, are all synonymous. So when we want to give God glory, then we would be reflecting his, his character. That's how we give God glory. I've heard it said that the, uh, the, great, um, the greatest flattery is imitation is the greatest uh, form of flattery. As we imitate Christ, we're, we are attracting other people to uh, what being a Christian is all about. That's how we give God glory. Now, also depends on what we watch and what we do and what we see. Um, there's, a, there's a spiritual concept in the Bible that, that says it's, uh, it's found in 2 Corinthians 3.18. And uh, if you guys want to jot that down um, and, and go back to it later, but it says what we're changed, uh, by beholding we're changed into the same image from glory to glory. So what are we watching, what are we listening to during the week? If we're feeding off the dumpster uh, uh, of the world, and we're not going to be hungry for the word of God uh, on the Sabbath. Amen? So, so Moses says, show me your glory. And God explains that his glory and his name and his character uh, are a part or, or you know, what is his glory. And so that gives us kind of a clue uh, as we go throughout the week. Are we giving God glory? Are we comfortable in our pew? Um, and allowing everybody else to do uh, things that we should be doing. Uh, uh, you know, get uncomfortable. That, that's, that's the whole, you know, God taught me that lesson as I'm speaking to you today, because all week I was like dreading, oh, get in front of a lot of people. But, you know, God politely reminded me it's not about me. It's about him and what he's done. Amen? <clears throat> so something interesting that I was, as I was studying this is, is God says, to Moses also, that you can't look at my face, and this is in Exodus 33, 20, you can't look at my face and live. <clears throat> now, I, I know that God was being very literal, because if Moses had looked at God's face, he would have died. But I think there's a spiritual application as well. You know, that you can't look at the face of God and, and, and live. If you truly look at God and, uh, and, and look, look at his face, it's described here in Isaiah 50, verse 6. <clears throat> you guys can turn to that. 
Let me know when you say amen when you're there. I'll start at verse 5. The Lord God opened mine ear, and I was not rebellious, neither turned away my back. I gave my back to smiters, and my cheeks to them that plucked off my hair, and I hid not, not my face from shame and spitting. So, this is describing Christ uh, at his crucifixion. That's what looking at the face of God is. When, when you see they're spitting on him, and they're plucking his, uh, his beard, and hitting him and saying, prophesy who hit, who hit you. That's the face of God. And when you behold that, then you die. And, and, and Paul says, I die daily. When you look at the face of love, you, you no longer want to live for yourself. Does that make sense? Amen. And so, you know, that, that really, made, really made me think this week as I was preparing the, this message. You know, uh, if we look at the face of God, then we don't want to live for ourselves anymore. But if we are truly converted, then we'll, we'll be just, we won't be just sitting in the pew at church and come, you know, punching in the time clock. We'll be living the gospel. We'll be living the gospel of the three angels' message, that reflecting Christ's character to, to a dying world that needs it so bad. Jesus said in, in Luke 17, 33, and in Matthew 16, 25, See, he, he that seeks to save his life will lose it. So when we look at the face of God, then we no longer want to live for self. And it's, and it's really, it's a love issue. Who are we in love with, ourselves, or are we in love with Christ? If you're in love with Christ, then you're not going to be thinking of yourself. I think Paul sums it up very nicely in, in, in Romans 13.10. Uh, he said, love is fulfillment of the law. So we're going to be reflecting God's character because we love him, and we are in love with him. And then we won't be faking it anymore. I, I was reminded, uh, just thinking about it, uh, an old movie that I saw where the guy's singing a gospel song, and uh, you're kind of auditioning, and the guy's like, you know, not interested. And he, and he said, well, why? He's like, because I don't believe you. And so, is that what the world says about us? You know, we're Seventh Adventists, so we come to church on the Sabbath on the right day, but is, you know, do, do people look at us and say, I don't believe you? I don't believe that you know, you've got something that I don't have. Um, you know, and, and that's, that's right now, that's what Jesus is saying that we, we are doing. We're sitting in the pews letting other people do uh, the work that we should be doing, and we're not living the gospel. We can preach it more by living it than we ever could by getting up on a pulpit and speaking in front of, of an audience of people. Because people can look at you and say, I don't believe you. And that's a sad situation. You know, if we're, if we're uh, part of the frozen chosen, we're, then we're part of the problem. And so Jesus says, you're neither hot nor cold. If you're hot, you, you get uncomfortable, don't you? And if you're cold, you get uncomfortable. But if you're in between, you're very comfortable. And that's where the devil wants us, is so we're very comfortable, comfortable all the way, to, going all the way to hell. And that, we don't want to do that. So... You know, the three angels' message is the gospel, is the only gospel. You know, I, you hear that all the time. You hear it on the radio and Christian, a lot of other denominations, a lot of other groups will say, you know, tell them about the gospel. Well, well what is the gospel? It's the three angels' message of righteousness by faith and reflecting God's image and God's character. Are we reflecting God's character on a daily basis, uh, a weekly basis, a monthly basis with our families, starting with our families? And, and uh, to you know, a dying world that needs it so desperately. Uh, you, know, you, know, you notice the disciples, uh, one of the things that I was looking is that the disciples were, were part of the church, all of them. Uh, and they, they were coming to church, they were with Christ every day, and they weren't converted. And they didn't know it. So they were just exactly, this, we're in the same, same condition that they were before they were converted. So I, you know, I pray as we start, start a new year, that we do something different. Let's get uncomfortable in, uh, for the Lord. Uh, let's ask God to show us. Uh, you know, the, the condition uh, mentioned in Revelation 3.17, they don't know it. They don't realize it. You know, if, you don't, uh, you know, if you don't know that you have uh, a disease and you don't go to the doctor, there's no way to, to, to fix it. Does that make sense? 
So let's ask God, show us where, where things in our lives need to be changed. Where can we reflect your image uh, more and more each day? Uh, <clears throat> Jesus said in John 14, uh, 15, if you love me, keep my commandments. So if love is fulfillment of the law, and we know that God is love, and we're supposed to re be reflecting his image, then that's what we need to pray for, is that God will send his Holy Spirit and get us out of this comfort zone that, that we are in. Does anybody know how uh, pearls are made? So pearls are beautiful, beautiful uh, to, to, look, to look at. Well, it's, it all starts out with a, an irritant, a grain of sand, and it irritates, uh, and, and then, of course, it's, uh, it's formed into a beautiful pearl. So the, that irritant can be turned into something beautiful. Uh, so, you know, my prayer uh, for, for our church, for each one of you, and for myself, is that, that we, God can put that irritant in our life to get us uncomfortable, to get us out of our comfort zone, to, uh, to, to help us to, to reflect his image. If you guys would turn to Galatians 2, I think that Paul really, really sums it up very well. Guys, uh, Galatians 2, 19 and 20. Some of you may already know this verse. For I, though the law, am dead to the law, I might live unto God. I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live, yet not I, but Christ that lives in me. And the life I now live in the flesh, I live by faith. In the, in the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. So throughout the week, when we make decisions, what, what, what determines uh, the decisions that we make? What, what is the driving force? Is it what I want, or is it what, what God wants? You know, what, what the Bible says in Corinthians 10.31, whatsoever you eat, drink, or whatever you do, do for the glory of God. So if we know that God's glory is his character, then whatever we eat, and drink and whatever we do should reflect God's character. So if we're eating harmful things that we know are wrong, and we're drinking harmful things, is that reflecting God's character? Is that bringing uh, us closer to God? Or is that bringing anybody around us that's watching us closer to God? So now that we know that God's glory is his character, anytime we see glory in the Bible, for the most part, we can, uh, replay, you know, we can put in uh, God's character. So, 1 Peter 3.15, if you guys would turn to that, was a, was a verse that, that really stuck with me uh, as I was preparing this message. 1 Peter 3.15. Say amen when you're there. All right. But sanctify the Lord God in your hearts, and be ready always to give an answer to every man that asks you for the reason, the hope that is in you with meekness and in fear. So the word that stuck with me was the hope. Right now, Jesus is saying we're in a hopeless condition, and we don't even know it. So how do you offer a dying world something you don't have? What's the hope that God's talking about here? There's, I think there's, there's a really important message here, the hope that you have. Uh, and, and that's in Colossians. If you'll turn to Colossians 1, 27, I think that uh, Paul tells us what that hope is. Bless you. Colossians 1, 27. <clears throat> to whom God would make known that the riches of the glory of his mystery among the Gentiles, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. So if we know that God's glory is his character, Christ in you, the hope of his character. Every day we're being imprinted on, whether, you know, somebody, there's, there's an imprint being put on us every day. It's either by the world or it's by Christ, whichever one we choose. And that's who we'll become more and more. In the end, the harvest is fully ripened. So for the wheat and the tares. It just depends, on, by our choices, it's gonna depend on what side of the harvest we're, we're gonna be on. My prayer for every, for, is for everybody here uh, to be part of the wheat, uh, of the Three Angels message. 
Now, one of the things that stuck with me when I was preparing this is, um, you know, the disciples, they complained nonstop, but after they were converted, they actually rejoiced when they were beaten and when they suffered. You know, our Sabbath school lesson, we're studying about Job and what he went through and the struggle that he went through. Uh, and and, and that's, that's what we're going to have to go through as well. So, uh, you know, we're going to need a, a lot of uh, the Holy Spirit in, uh, in, in Christ so that we can reflect uh, his image in God's glory. Now, if we look at um, you know, Revelation 22, 4, the, the, the saved ones are going to have God's name written on their forehead, which is his, his name and his glory is his character. In Revelation 13, 3, the whole world wanders after the beast, and they're going to look like, they're going to, uh, look like the beast, and they're going to imitate him uh, based on, on his characters and, and the way he is. And uh, So it's an important lesson for us to, to study, to think about, uh, to pray about, that uh, as, as we start a new year, uh, do we want to, to you know, still be stuck in that position, the same old, same old, or do we want to uh, you know, allow Christ daily to change us into his image? Look at, uh, at the image of God's face, and that way we will die uh, daily um, to sin and to the world. Uh, one of the things that uh, I, I really encouraged me is, in, is if you look, read Revelation 7, 5 through 8, uh, it's very interesting that Jesus lists all the names of the tribes. And as you know, uh, the name and character are synonymous. So when Jacob was converted, he went from, uh, uh, God changed his name, which means ch change his character. So he wrestled with God, and God changed his character. And that's Christ in you, the hope of glory. So as, when you uh, study the names of each of the, the tribes of Judah, I will praise the Lord. Reuben, God has looked on me. Gad, given good fortune. Aser, I am happy. <clears throat> Naphtali, my wrestling or struggle. Manasseh, making me to forget. I feel like Manasseh more and more each day. Uh, Simeon, God hears me. Levi, joined or attached as in a marriage. And Issachar, purchased me. Zebulun, a dwelling place. And <clears throat> Joseph, God will add to me. And Benjamin, son of his right hand. So, you know, God's saying that they're, they're going to take a certain amount from each of those tribes, and that's going to be part of the 144,000. So, each one of those names, when you put them together in the order that they were put in, it spells out a victory song, with just adding a few words here and there that I've and. Uh, this is what it spells out. <clears throat> I will praise the Lord, for he has looked on me and granted good fortune. I am happy because my wrestling with God is making me to forget. God hears me and is attached to me. He has purchased me a dwelling place and will add to me the son of his right hand. Isn't that beautiful? It's a marriage proposal. It's a, it's a promise that God says that he will change, that we'll wrestle, we'll, just like uh, Jacob wrestled with God, but he will change us into his image if we, if we allow him. He won't force us, but if we allow him, he will change us, amen? If God said it, then that means it can be done. And in the end, uh, we can be part of the, the Revelation 22.4 and have God's name or character uh, written, written on our foreheads. So something that I'd like to ask as we close today is if anybody has anybody <clears throat> in their family uh, that, that they want, uh, that, that, you know, that they're concerned about, if anybody has uh, friends, uh, um, anything on their mind uh, that... Uh, um, somebody you know, getting into trouble, a troubled son, a troubled niece, aunt, um, or yourself, or you, you want to pray and, and, and have God show you where in your life that you're needing to surrender in, in, in the state and condition that you're in. So I just pray that uh, if anybody has that, they'd come forward, and I want to pray uh, for, for you and, and everybody, and let's, let's, let's get out of our comfort zone. Let's get out of our comfortable pews. Let's do something different. Let's reflect God's image so that we can be part of the harvest and be part of the three angels' message that goes around the world. Amen?
So if anybody has anything in their life that they want to pray for, uh, if you want to surrender yourself to God and say, Lord, in 2017, I want to do something different. I want to reflect your image. I'm tired of being part of the frozen chosen. I, I want to be part of the solution, not part of the problem. And come forward. Let's do, if you, you, know, if you want to get results you've never got, you've you got to do things you've never done. Amen? <clears throat> Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, I'm, I'm just grateful for every person here. I, I pray that you'll, uh, you'll put, uh, the recording angel will see everybody that's come forward, Lord. And there, everybody here is hurting, has some issue in their life, uh, an addiction, a sin, um, anything, Lord. I just pray that you will, through the power of your Holy Spirit, you will deliver them. You promised in Matthew 21, 21, Mark 11, 24, whatsoever things you ask when you pray, believe and you shall receive them. And if you say to that mountain, be thou removed, it will be done for you. So Lord, I pray every, that pe there's people here hurting. There's people here with mountains in their lives. Uh, people here that are in debt. There's people here that have addictions. Uh, there's people here, Lord, that, that uh, you know, have sins of gossip, hatred. If there's anybody here that has anger or resentment in their heart towards you know, each other or anybody here, Lord, I pray that you will help them let go and help them to f forgive. And that, that 2017 can be a new year. Uh, that we can be a, a people on fire for you, Lord. And uh, I thank you for making this a reality. I pray that each person here will, will go home a changed person, and they'll never be the same by your grace, Lord. And I pray this all in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, guys.